Well, hello and welcome to episode 21 of the All Things Leeds podcast with myself, Ed McIntyre, and here with me in the studio, it is, of course, Leeds United fan and good friend, Charles Foster. Charles, have you recovered from Wednesday night, mate? I mean, it's not been the best week of my life, mate. I've yeah. got a face like burnt porridge. We've been knocked out of the playoff semi-final by Frank Lampard's Derby County, and I screwed up my final uni exam, so... All in all, it's not been a brilliant one. Ah, oh well. Oh well. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully it gets better <laughs> in the next week. Uh, but yeah, we will, of course, uh, dive deep into Wednesday night's 4-2 loss uh, at home to Frank Lampard's Derby County in what was the second leg of our championship playoff semi-final tie with them. 4-3 it finished on aggregate after we won first leg 1-0, but it is Derby who take on Aston Villa in the playoff final at Wembley at the end of this month. Uh, we'll also discuss Bielsa as well as looking at which players need to go, who probably will go, and what kind of players need to come in to the club in the summer. This is the All Things Leeds podcast. <laughs> So then, Charles, and everyone listening, Leeds United bottled it. <laughs> Leeds United bottled it. We didn't turn up when it mattered, and it's Championship football again next season. <laughs> How are we feeling? I'll tell you what, mate, and I said this to you when we were walking out of the stadium. I, I, I felt nothing. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel bad. I felt like someone had emptied me out from the inside walking out. I, I described it to a mate of mine, and not Ed, but for the listeners, I described it to a mate of mine on the phone. I don't know, going home as like it was like attending your own funeral. It was just it was it was such a surreal, weird, depressing experience. Yeah. It was it was probably the most disappointed I've ever been. Yeah, I mean, I was more disappointed this year than I was in the monkey year because I never expected us to win the playoffs in the monkey year. Yeah, I mean the thing is in the monkey. We there? Yeah, in the monkey year, we bottled it early. You know, we bottled it early. We didn't bottle it in the last day. We didn't get into the playoffs, and it's the fact that it's, we in the playoffs. We won the first leg one nil, a perfect way to start it, and then we were two 0 up in the tie, and then ended up bottling it. It's kind of yeah, it, it, it is. It doesn't get much worse than that, really. For about forty four minutes, it looked like it was going to be perfect. Yeah. Until that, until that absolute howler, it looked like it was going to be perfect. I'm sure we'll get on to that. But. Yeah, um, but it, it doesn't get much worse than that. But, I mean, to be fair, I'd rather lose in the semi-final than the final. Let's let, let's be honest. Rather lose in the semi-final than the final. Not to them, though. <laughs> not, not to final. If it, if it was to, to West Brom, oh, oh well. <laughs> watching, watching all those bloody binocular celebrations that yeah. Derby's owner Mel Morris on the pitch it was just awful but Jody Morris bouncing around the touchline yeah absolute knobhead what was it Ke- <laughs> what was it Keo and um, Keo and uh, Wilson Ke- as well good in the south stand I, yeah oh. Frank Lampard doing the crying crying signs and yeah it, 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 was, it was awful to watch at the end, um, but yeah, I mean, giant our last star because you, you're probably not going to win, uh, win promotion. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just doesn't get worse than that really on Wednesday night. And as you said, you know, the feeling it was nothing really. I feel as though the match just, you know, took all my emotion out of me. Like some games have this season, it was just emotionally draining. We had to watch Calvin Phillips absolutely balling as well. He was yeah. so upset. Yeah, he was he, so good. Yeah, he was absolutely crying his eyes out. He was, um, he was, he was devastated. Yeah, and and you know it's just so draining. Um, and you know the, the day after, <laughs> I think me and quite a lot of other fans, Leeds United fans, just felt a bit ill. <laughs> really, we didn't feel too great to feel up to. How, how did you feel the, the morning after? Uh, <laughs> I just got up and I just. I, I, I didn't really do it all day. Yeah. I just, uh, I just, I just sat about. Uh, yeah, my, my parents left for work, and I was just, I was there, I was there in the house all day, and I was just on. I couldn't go on Facebook or I couldn't go on Twitter, so I was just on YouTube, and I had to, but unsubscribe from every single football-related channel because I couldn't bear looking at anything like that. Yeah. that. Apart from all things leads, though, subscribe to all things leads. Of course, I'm. One of, one, one of the OG subscribers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it was your fourth subscriber, so yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just awful. And yeah, Championship football again next season. We have to play Wigan, QPR, Millwall, Gary Monks, Birmingham City, Middlesbrough, Barnsley, Huddersfield, Huddersfield Neil Warnock's Cardiff. Neil Warnock's Cardiff City. <laughs> oh, it is just. Awful. It's <laughs> awful to think about. It's so shit. It really is. Yeah. I can't. I can't hack it. 
I, I can't. I won't be able to bear it if Neil Warnock gets a result at Elm Road. It's going to be. It's going to be the absolute worst. Especially so, if it's a four-one result. His as well. bloody smug face. Oh, and his post-match interview. I can't. I can't do another year of that. I can't, I can't bear watching Sol Bambo wander around Ellen Road thinking he's a footballer, mate. I can't. I, can't, I, can't, I, I, I couldn't be a bear it. Oh yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be so poor. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it really does kill me. And I was so convinced at different points throughout the season that it is our year and that we are going up. It's for hope that kills, isn't it? So it's always the case for Leeds United. Yeah. So it's like it's not like an abusive relationship. It's like it's like you know when you see them them those, them scraps in like kung fu films where they just pick them up the floor after battering them and then just as they're picking them up they punch them in the face again. <laughs> sort of like every season with Leeds, they kind of pick you up with a bit of hope and you think, oh yeah, we're gonna go up here. We're in the, we're the top six. We're in top two. We're looking like we might finally do it. And they get to, they get you to right towards the end and then just punch you in the face and then you're back to square one again. Yeah. Except that's, that's on repeat for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get your point. I feel um, like I get punched in the face in May every year, mate. <laughs> Uh, I mean, usually it's always February. Our season yeah, it, it, it was March last year, to be, to be fair, and it was yeah. April the year before. We got to May this time, so... Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep on going, we keep on going. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I was confident, especially going into the playoff semi-final second leg um, against Frank Lampard's Derby County. Uh, you know, it's be- particularly after that perfect first leg, really. I mean, in that first leg, Derby had one or two spells, but I mean, I felt as though we dominated that first leg and we could have got off to a more perfect start in the tie. Yeah, they were pushing for the last 20 minutes of the game, but other than that, it was kind of, it was relatively easy. It was kind of just a comfortable day at the office. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, it was 1-0 in that first leg, thanks to a goal from uh, <coughs> Kemal Roof. Uh, great play <coughs> on the left-hand side, first of all, uh, between uh, Stuart Dallas and Jack Harrison, of all people. Um, and then great ball from Jack Harrison and a great first-time finish from Kemal Roof, really. And, you know, it, it was a really, really good goal that Kemal Roof, of course, scoring again against Derby and we definitely did miss him in that second leg didn't we of course he was out with uh, an injury I think it was a calf injury um, but yeah we definitely did miss him in that second leg didn't we well yeah because he's he, his movement terrifies Derby's back line you could see it in the first leg like Keo was constantly worried about where Roof was yeah Keo was never more comfortable than the slow ambling frame of Patrick Ramford yeah. never being more than a foot from him ba- ba- never ba- making a forward run never running into the box faster than five miles per hour He's just garbage, Patrick. N- Patrick Bamford, never winning a header, n- never having a shot. Seven million pound striker we got Patrick Bamford for, um, and he's he's usually is a number nine. Kemal Roof, you know, he's played winger quite you know past few years. Bamford, he's he's straight out number nine, and it was just so poor in that second leg. It was so frustrating to watch. He just he just looked like he couldn't care less. At all. His finest moment was probably that penalty, which wasn't a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> that was all he did all game. Yeah. I mean, it, it looked like he had never ran before in his life or kicked a football, a bit like me. <laughs> but it, it looked like he'd never played a game of football before in his life. He, it was so poor. It, it's unbelievable. Uh, I don't know how Roof managed to get himself injured in between the first yeah. leg and the second leg. And, it, and it's not like in any of the uh, interviews after the first leg, you know, he, he didn't really mention, yeah, I'm, he did, I'm feeling he, a bit he, of no. He did come off on about the 70th minute, but I just assumed that was just a resting for the second leg. Yeah, so did I. I he, did, he didn't mention at all, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit struggling. Maybe it's because the interviewers never really asked, why did you come off on 70 minutes? Um, but, yeah, it, we, we, we definitely missed... Kamal Roof and Patrick Bamford, yeah, he he's just so so poor. He he, he was awful um, on Wednesday night. Uh, Jack Harrison, though, I mean, as we predicted for the second leg, he didn't really do much. It was probably the most five out of ten performance I've ever seen. Yeah, he did nothing that wrong, but nothing that right. Yeah, it, it was back to his normal self. <laughs> it, it was an it was a classic Jack Harrison performance. He just didn't yeah. really do much. <laughs> he just kind of hung about. He didn't press for. He didn't press well at all. He didn't putting any decent balls into the box he won a couple of corners it, that was about it yeah uh, Stuart Dallas though who was involved in that goal uh, at Derby uh, he had a great game in the second leg of course two goals in that second leg he, 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 he couldn't really have asked anything more from Stuart Dallas no. he, he gave it he gave it his all yeah. I'm just pleased that, that Stuart Dallas had a good game oh, he'd been he, there he, four he, years he, he played well it. against Ipswich he played well in the first leg because he linked up with Harrison for the goal and he scored both our goals in the last game so he, he, he hit kind of perfect form at perfect time and he was the only person in the league squad to do that yeah it, it was great uh, but of course 1-0 to Leeds United going into the second leg I mean first of all though should it have been 1-0 to Leeds going into that second leg? Should Derby have had a penalty? 
in no. that first leg when Harrison and Perko went down in their box. Referee did award a penalty, but the linesman overturned it. Linesman, he made the right decision, didn't he? Yeah, there wasn't any contact. Yeah, you need contact for a penalty. There wasn't any contact. Yeah, he got he got the ball. Bogle's going round behind Harrison's him. Harrison's leg goes under his leg while his leg's up in the air. Doesn't touch his leg. Nicks the ball slightly. If anything, it should be a corner. Yeah, because Harrison gets a nick on the ball, so that's a corner. Mm. But it, it gets given as a free kick lead. It's not enough for a free kick lead either. Yeah, it should be given as a corner for Derby that, but it wasn't. Yeah, but but definitely not a penalty in the lines. No, not, the right not a penalty. Uh, Frank Lampard uh, saying after it that he's never seen anything like that. I mean, he obviously does remember the game in January where we were awarded a penalty and the linesman overturned it because it was offside. Because he's an absolute clown. Yeah. All, he, he goes on to talk about human VAR, doesn't it? Yeah. All it's VAR. It's like human VAR. All VAR is human VAR. VAR is a referee yeah. in a room looking at a screen <laughs> who signals to another referee. All VAR is yeah. chuffing human VAR. He's such a... He's such an EastEnders, Harry Redknapp, the English football clown. <laughs> I can't stand him. He's just absolutely deluded. What a deluded comment it's that one of the was. Most, it's one of the most disgusting things in English football that one of John Terry or Frank Lampard is going to be part of a management team in the Premier League next season. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> that is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, also, should some of the players have played in that second leg? Or should Click here? He should, should he have got sent off? In that first leg for that headbutt, should Huddersfield have got sent off for that elbow and down? It's, it's all about consistency. Letter of the law, both Click and Huddleston should have been sent off yeah. for their offences. But given they booked Click, I'm not. I, I would be. I'd be delighted. But I wouldn't expect him to send off Huddleston because it was similar levels of violent conduct. Yeah. So if you send one off, you've got to send the other one off. So given they sent neither off, I'm not annoyed about that. Yeah. I thought. I thought the referee and, and officiating in the first leg was very good. To be fair, the second leg it, it was poor. <laughs> Well, you say that, it, the only thing I would criticise the second like, ref for would be he's far too card happy. He was yeah. constantly carding people. Yeah. Uh, uh, apart from that, the penalty was a pen, because I've seen it back. Um, I'm not sure if ours was a pen or not, though. It looked, it, looked like a, it looked like one that Jack Grealish would definitely get given. And it looked like one that Patrick Bamford wasn't given because he's Patrick Bamford. Yeah, because he's just been done for simulation previously in the, in, in the Villa game. So that all the referees are like, oh, we're not, we're not giving you anything now. Mm. Um, yeah so uh, second leg uh, on Wednesday night uh, as I say we did go into it in a great position 1-0 up uh, I don't think we were too great in the game but we did go 1-0 up on the night 2-0 up on the aggregate on 24 minutes um, Stuart Dallas as we've mentioned uh, scored this but it's a great ball from Phillips for the free kick first of all again why is it taking us this long to realise that Cameron Phillips is great at set pieces? Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a it's a good ball. Hit straight off the post. Stuart Dallas, right place at the right time. Good finish. And you know, at that point, we're in ecstasy. And we're thinking, 2-0 up. Um, you know, 2-0 up in the tie. You're just thinking, we're off to Wembley. <laughs> we're off to Wembley. But you know, it's just unbelievable how we managed to let it slip from that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... If I hadn't been there, it would I would struggle to believe it, but I saw it. We just fell apart in the most horrendous manner possible, and uh, we we just shouldn't we should just shouldn't have screwed it up. We we literally we had it in the palm of our hands. We we snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> we really did. Um, we're almost two 0 up as well uh, at one point when uh, Matthaus Click his shot was dis- uh, deflected off uh, Richard Keo um, and hit and uh, hit the bar. Um, also, should we have a better, should we have had a penalty? We mentioned it earlier. Bamford, uh, Keo uh, brought down Bamford in the box. I haven't seen it back from a good enough angle, but people are saying that there was contact. Yeah, there's definite contact there, but I mean Bamford he does make a meal of it, but I do think it was a penalty because there was contact there. I mean, definitely not a booking for Bamford. I definitely reckon, not a booking. I reckon if he it had fell over in a more natural fashion, it'd have probably been given it. He flung himself over in yeah proper pantomime fashion. Yeah, and you're never going to get a penalty for doing that. Yeah. He's just so weak as well. <laughs> He's so weak as Patrick properly, Bamford. He needs to, <laughs> I, saw, I heard it on the, uh, sorry to plug this, uh, but the, the Square Ball podcast, which you should also go listen to. It's a great to. podcast. Uh, they, um, they were saying that uh, they'll allow Bamford back into the first team squad next season if, they spend the, if he spends the entire summer in the gym with Salim Lamrani. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> think, he, think what he'd come back as, some kind of beast. Yeah. I mean, even when he was getting subbed off during the second half, when he was running off, he was running off so slow. Like, other players would just sprint off. He's just jogging off. 
I, I honestly don't think he can go faster than a jog. No, <laughs> <laughs> I really. I've never. Yeah, seen, I've, I've, ne- I've never seen it happen. So yeah. there's no dif- definitive proof that he can exceed a jog. Yeah, I, I would honestly say that Patrick Bamford's. I'd say Lusoga were better than Patrick Bamford. To be fair, I mean they're both kind of similar with the runs that they make, and you know the, 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 or, or the lack are. thereof. <laughs> but the but the fact is Lusoga when he takes a shot outside of a box. It's going in. Patrick Bamford, it's a people are going wide of the post. It's as simple as that. Patrick Bamford, £7 million. What an absolute joke. We, we've definitely lost money on him. We will get onto transfers in, uh, later on in the podcast, but I'm we looking definitely forward have to lost that, money actually. on him. I'm looking forward to talking about the transfers so, yeah. so that we don't have to talk about this game anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let, let's carry on uh, with this game then. So, um, uh, yeah, a Derby Day equalised just before half-time. A mistake here from Keith Glockson and Liam Cooper uh, after they collided. Now, now, here's my take on it. So, for me... Key Cook's here, first of all, he starts too far off his line. Um, and then he starts running out too late. He starts running towards the ball too late. And at that point, Cooper starts panicking. And all of a sudden, it becomes a race to see who can clear the ball first between Cooper and Key Cook's here, despite them being teammate, teammates. Now, someone needs to put a name on it, first of all. But Key Cook, he doesn't need to come out anyway. Because Cooper, as we've seen all season, Cooper, he's not that far away from the ball. There's other defenders coming back. Cooper... As we've seen all season, would control that, take it round to the left, and get it cleared down the pitch. But because Kiko says that's coming out, it sends panic and shockwaves down the players, and all of a sudden it becomes a race who can clear it first. Cooper made a, cla- made, a, he made a classic centre half mistake of letting the ball bounce. You never, ever, yeah. ever let the ball bounce. Yeah, ever, never. ever, ever. If the ball's coming over the top, you move backwards and head it out of play. Head it back to the goalkeeper or head it to your other centre half or your full back. You do not let the ball bounce because the striker has about four or five times more he's about four times five times more likely to bring it down and get it under control. Yeah. As soon as the ball bounces, strikers have always got more pace than centre halves. You're gonna get beaten to the ball. Yeah. Strikers are very rarely bigger than centre halves. You're not going to get beaten in the air by a strike by ma- the majority of strikers. Yeah, and and especially given when they've got Jack Mario up front, he's about five foot five or something stupid like that. <laughs> he's never beaten six foot one Liam Cooper in the air. No, uh, but Keycock say, I mean, there's, there's no need for him to come out for me. I think Cooper's got it dealt with, but he starts running out a bit too late, panic, and uh, it causes a mistake. Ball falls to Mario, and, and he scores. But Keycock said for me, like, why is he coming off his line? He does it again. Why 30, does he come off, He does yeah. it again thirty seconds later. So as it, costs, well. it costs us a goal here, and thirty seconds later, he's running out again and almost costs us a second goal. Well, he misses the ball again, but this time, I think it's uh, Phillips gets it clear. Yeah, but he almost costs us another goal. What, why does he do that? And then and that, that's all Derby did. Every the rest of the game, all they did would f- was feed the ball to the edge of the box, pass leads his back line, yeah. wait for Kiko to rush out, and then charge it. Yeah, and they, then they just send balls through the middle. They scored. They, they scored their second goal just after half time in exactly the same way. Doing yeah. that, they just put it just behind, uh, in between Cooper and Brady, but but not enough pace to reach Casilla. Ka- but uh, and maybe a little bit too much pace for the Derby players to reach it, and then just hoped, and yeah. it worked every time. Yeah, Cause I mean, because for some reason he runs towards it and then ju- basically jumps in the wrong direction yeah. oh. every time. And there was another point in the game. I know we're skipping ahead here, and I keep getting told off for this. By the way, you won't <laughs> know this, listeners. I get a lot of telling off from Ed from skipping the uh, the chronological order of the games when we do <laughs> these podcasts. <laughs> Later on in the game, do you remember that bit where it just bounced off that Derby player's back and he just caught it? Yeah. But he lost the ball completely when he was running out to claim it. Yeah. And he fortunately caught it again. Yeah. Oh, he's so, his decision making is just so poor. And you, you know, you'd expect a 32 year old from Real Madrid to be decent. I mean, sorry for having high standards for a Real Madrid goalkeeper, but I would expect a lot more from him. And, you know, the mistake for the first goal, you know, who, who would you put the blame on? Is it Cooper's fault or is it Kiko Casillas' fault? I would give my left leg to sign Kieran Westwood right now. <laughs> I genuinely would. You're saying it's Kiko Casillas' fault? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then, of course yeah. it is. If you're running out, why does he slide into it? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, if you're running if, out, get it the, clear. The ball was inside the box. You can jump on that as a goalkeeper. You can jump on the ball. Yeah. And then if you get kicked in the face, worst case scenario, you're down for a bit and the striker gets a booking. Yeah. A best case scenario, you get the ball first, the striker doesn't kick you in the face, and you can crack on. Yeah. Why would he slide? The, even 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 as the ball comes towards him, it comes towards his left leg, and he slides towards it with his right leg, and and then moves his arms, but misses the ball entirely. Basically, just slides past the ball. Yeah. And Cooper's obviously all, already on his way down, 
And then um, and Berardi can't get there in time. Yeah, I mean, like Key Cook said, when you're coming out, be confident and deal with it. And if you're not going to deal with it, just don't come out. Yeah, it's so frustrating. He's a goalkeeper. Stay in your goal line, Key Cook say. But yeah, again, you know, he, he concedes 30 seconds later, almost almost uh, uh, costs us another goal. But, it, you know, despite that goal, uh, it was one all at half time. Um, but at half time, I was still banging on about a Wembley trip, wasn't I? <laughs> I was still banging on about Wembley trip. I was still confident. I, I said the words, we still have a one goal advantage, and that was gone inside about 60 seconds of the second half. Yeah, Derby did take the lead less than a minute into the second half. Uh, d- uh, so they go 2-1 up on the night, 2-2 on aggregate. Uh, Mount here with, with a decent finish, to be fair. He's, he's falling over, but he ends up uh, being a decent finish, chipping it over. But, I mean, again, Kiko say when the ball hits the back of the net, Kiko say is outside of his eight yard Luke, Luke Erlin's out of position as well, though, for the goal. Yeah. But you do have five defenders in the box. And K- Kiko Kassir, at this point, when the ball goes in, he's nine yards off his goal line, sat outside his eight-yard box on his ass, just sat there. Like, why is he nine yards out of his box? If Kiko Kassir is on his goal line, he's diving to save that. Yeah, and the way that he was, uh, Mount was falling, that, that would probably not have been a hard-to-save shot. Yeah. It might have even gone over the bar. Well, it was quite a weak effort, to be fair. Because by the time he'd have shot it... Uh, Defenders would have been covering him, and he'd have been probably forced into a bad yeah. shot. I mean, there was not, there was no real pace on the ball as it were going in, just dipping in. Key Cook safe, he's on his line, he's saving that. But for some reason, he rushes out again, nine yards out. There's an argument. The there's an argument to be said though that Mount would have probably not has been as desperate to reach the ball and falling down as he took the shot if he hadn't have been had Kiko running towards him. So he probably would have taken a touch Mount and. You never know, I might have just finished it yeah. anyway. So I'm still a fan of my goalkeeper staying on the goal line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I got very frustrated at him. Yeah. Uh, Derby did then, they, uh, then awarded a penalty in 58 minutes. Cooper uh, took in on uh, uh, Tom Lawrence's uh, shirt and brought brought him down. Cooper gets a yellow. I mean, no no argument here. It's, a it's definite, just a, it's definite si- penalty. such a silly thing to do. Yeah, it's a the silly ball, challenge. The ball, I mean... If you let if you, if you let him run, I still think the ball goes out before yeah. he gets there. But Lawrence is going nowhere. Even, even if he does get the ball, he's going nowhere. And also, Jack Harrison's running in behind, to and and he and he's there to deal with anything that 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 happens. So Lawrence, you know, he's going nowhere. It's a stupid challenge from Liam Cooper. Um, and there's no argument that that it definitely was was a penalty. It was a silly foul. Um, and yeah, upstairs uh, Wilson to a score. They take the lead. Three one on the night. Three two on aggregate. Uh, but we do. Equalised though, uh, as as I mentioned, uh, Dallas another great finish. Um, yes, I think he's offside. I disagree, uh, but all right. <laughs> but yeah, so so we get back in the game, equalised and aggregate, it's three three. But then Mavardi he gets second yellow and a red um, on the 70, uh, 78 minutes. Uh, I, I think it was. I put seven minutes on the script. I didn't. I didn't put the second number. <laughs> that'd have been a tough game if that had happened. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, so I, I think it, I think it was later than that. No, I seventy eight. Uh, Definitely it? seventy something. I put they, a seven there because they scored an eighty four, <laughs> didn't they, or eighty five? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Bavadi. I mean, second yellow and red. No argument here that it was a dangerous challenge from Bavadi. I mean, it could have been a straight red card. To be honest, it was it was an awful challenge from Bavadi. First. Yeah, of all. Yeah, this is why I'm going to criticise the referee because he was fouled at least twice. Yes. While he was running about, he got pulled over. He got he got kicked in the back of the ankle. Yeah. He got fouled twice and then lost his temper. Yeah. But um, which is always a big issue with yeah. Berardi. Yeah, I mean Berardi, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. You know, he's he's a very passionate guy, and emotions run high. But he's got but, an incredibly short fuse. But you know, he shouldn't have got to that point where Berardi has to make the challenge because, yeah, he did get chal- he did get fouled about two times seconds before he lunged in. Um, and of course, you know, he, he's just been he's just been fouled. Nothing's given. So yeah, he, he's a bit angry, and he's just thought, you know what, I'm just going to dive in and just boot the feet off one of these guys because I'm just furious how, we, how we've not been given anything but there definitely should have been a foul there on Bavardi but the referee doesn't give it uh, players on Bavardi ends up lunging in and yeah uh, like I said you know no argument that's a, that's a red card could have been a straight red card but it's his second yellow um, and yeah it's down to 10 men and from then on with uh, 10, 10 minutes 15 minutes to go you know we've got a massive massive mountain to climb and it, and it killed the game really well, I, I said to you when we stood in the stadium didn't I when we went down to 10 men I said we're just going to have to see this out to, to penalties now because we're not going to score another one with 10 men Yeah, 
And, uh, but that's not to be else away, is it? He don't he don't sit back and defend. No, no. We saw it with Nottingham Forest earlier in the season when we went two and ahead with ten men, and then instead of just sitting back and defending, <laughs> he goes out and, and tries to get. Yeah, I think his strategy the there though is I think he just thinks, oh, well, if we can go three or four one up, we'll be all, we'll be okay. But we got ten men though, so it's not easy. Yeah, it I is know. not easy. And um, we bring on Izzy Brown to try and uh, turn the game around. I mean, I mean, why do we bring on Izzy Brown? Why he he, he hasn't given him. Any get any first team, you know, game time, um, you know, at all this season really, apart from QPR. Um, but yeah, he's given him barely any time. But in five minutes left, the last five minutes of the most important game of our season, uh, you know, the final game of the season, as it ended up being, and he and he brings him on to try and change the game. I mean, why? Why does he do that? And he brings them on for Bamford as well. So that that shows you <laughs> where Bamford is in Bielsa's mind probably right now. <laughs> Um, I, yeah. I, I don't know why he brought on Brown to be yeah. fair and, and Brown uh, didn't really do much either I mean we had that like that free kick on the edge of the box didn't we with about which, I think yeah. I think because they were there about a minute left they went down to 10 as well didn't they they got someone sent yeah, off yeah they, they got uh, Scott Malone sent off in uh, added time for tr- uh, attempted murder on Pablo Hernandez yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the only way I can describe that challenge because it wasn't even close to a fair challenge yeah. he just two footed him in the knees yeah it was awful um and uh, but it, it didn't really mean much. It was too late. I mean, five minutes from time. Um, Derby did take the lead uh, in in the tie again. Uh, Bamford again, just weak as piss as usual against Keogh. Yeah, he just. That, having said that though, he has got his arms round his neck, and the referee didn't give him a free kick. Yeah, for that. I thought it should have been a free kick, but I mean, again, you know, just just out muscle him. Well, just chuck, it's not hard. Just chuck that um. I can't say that word. Yeah. I was going to say something else. <laughs> uh, it's just chuck it. That, 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 that ugly, just, ugly <laughs> son of a to the floor. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you, know, you can just bleep that out or cut it out, or whatever. <laughs> just chuck him to the floor. Why? What? I mean, Richard Keogh is about four inches shorter than Patrick Bamford. Yeah, and if Bamford actually had anything but, if he uh, actually had some muscles, if, if he didn't have the f- physical characteristics of a cheese string, he <laughs> <you> could. <laughs> He could have just... You literally just... You throw him over, don't you? Yeah. You just chuck him over. Yeah. If, he's, if he put his arms on his shoulders, you literally turn around and run forward yeah. and you'll knock him flat. <laughs> but uh, Keo, yeah, he, he wins the ball, goes on this mad run through the middle, ends up uh, laying it off to uh, Marriott, the ball off to Marriott, uh, who I chipped th- it I, over. When I saw that, again. I thought he was offside. Mm. He looked a li- he looked marginally offside to me when he yeah. went Marriott. I'm not sure. But, but maybe... I don't know if Cooper or some... Or Berardi were playing him up. Actually, one for Brady, would it? Uh, Cooper or Felix were playing him on, but yeah, it it looked it looked offside to me. It looked like he'd passed it, and Marriott was just stood in our box with nobody else in our box. Yeah, we were still on the edge of the box, and it now yeah, looked offside to me. But then, of course, Casilla runs out again and gets chipped. And yeah. it, it was almost identical to their their goal after half time. It it was same spot, same kind of chip chip finish. Yeah, it it was just the same. Yeah, but Kiko save again, run, running off his line. What, why is he doing? Why is he doing that again? Um, but yeah, it, they they go ahead. Um, it's four two on the night, four three on aggregate, and yeah, we're down to ten minutes. And they, yeah, they go down to ten men in early time, but it's a little too late. And uh, yeah, ends up being four two on the night, four time, four three in aggregate. Um, and yeah, Derby end up going through. It's just heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. <laughs> I just want to finish talking about this, mate. I'm like Ian Beale, mate. I've got nothing left. I really don't. <laughs> just, I just, oh, God. Uh, yeah. It was just, I, I couldn't, I, I, I turned around and I said to Ed while we were in the stadium, <clears throat> when they were all bouncing about in the Derby away end, and yeah. that cockney clown was running around the our pitch, and I just said to him, I can't, I can't any more of this. I just said, I, I said to him, you're going to have to move, mate, because I'm, I'm going to have to go. <laughs> I clapped the lads, I clapped the lads for, for the season, season, for the season they got, not for that performance because they didn't because no. they didn't deserve it for the performance. No, definitely not. Apart from Stuart Dallas and maybe Jamie Shackleton, nobody deserved a round of applause for that performance. Yeah. Um, I clapped them because we had a, we had a, such a great season, and I heard some I saw something today where someone said this season kind of feels like you know the season before we went up into the championship from League One. You know when we got beaten in the semi final by Millwall. Yeah, and uh, they drew at Ellen Road and knocked us out. It, and, and then following season, we went, went and uh, beat Bristol Rovers and went up. It kind of has that kind of feel about it. Yeah. Obviously, without the uh, unreasonable EFL points deduction this time. <laughs> uh, although, I, I may be saying that prematurely. I'm sure we'll get one for something. Um, <laughs> that, they'll make up some rule. Yeah. They'll make up some rule. We'll get some kind of belated Spygate deduction for next season. <laughs> you watch it, some stupid... I mean, yeah. if, if Angus Kinnear keeps writing his comments in the 
in the program like he does, then we're definitely going to get a. Uh, <laughs> We're definitely going to get some kind of fine because they are so funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I, um, I buy the Square Ball magazine. I don't. I very rarely buy the club program. But if you do, if you are buying club program, definitely go and check out Angus Kinnear's notes in there because they're really funny. <laughs> he was talking about the um, the incident. You know, the incident panel that reviewed Conor Herhan's punch on. Um, on click, and he basically said on a uh, on, on an EFL panel that must have contained uh, <laughs> Joey Barton and Conor McGregor, they deemed it not violent enough to to, to, cons- to constitute violent conduct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you need to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should definitely go. Obviously, you can't not buy them now because it's the end of the season. But next season, definitely buy the things with Kenneth's yeah. comments in. Next season in the championship because we put older a two 0 lead in a, in a tie. It's not fun. Um, at least we get to shout abuse at Sol Bamba. Yeah, and hopefully our better players than we do this season, yeah. or at least or at least more players. Yeah. I think I, I think more is the key thing because I think if we'd have had more cover, we'd have probably got better results in the games where we had massive injuries. Yeah, well, it's simple as forty six games in championship season. You can't live off two players in one position you, you just can't it's impossible as we've seen this season you can't you can't do 18 players for a squad in the championship yeah. you need at least 23 yeah definitely I definitely agree with that uh, but yeah the, the, the full time whistle went and it was just heartbreaking you have to live with Derby County and uh, the Derby uh, players uh, running around the pitch uh, doing all the spying and the crying uh, signs uh, yeah it was just awful um, Keacock said as well just a word on him uh, when the full time whistle went all the players dropped to the floor in tears, as Calvin Phillips, as we mentioned, crying his eyes out. But Kiko could say just straight down the tunnel. I didn't agree with that. You no. Know, he probably would have got a lot of stick, but stand there and take it because you deserve a lot of stick. I mean, him and Bamford would have got the most stick. But yeah, Kiko say just straight down the tunnel. Um, uh, Liam Cooper was one of the ones who actually immediately went around the stadium to applaud the fans. Yeah. He, he did it straight. I mean, Shackleton was in bits as well. He was on the floor. Yeah. And, uh, Calvin Phillips uh, had about four people trying to console him because he was just he was just go- he was devastated. He was gutted. Yeah. Um, he, did, you, he, did you see him on pitch? He was just he was just wandering about in circles. He was just yeah with his, sh- with his shirt over his. It was face. it was awful to see. It, it really was awful to see. Yeah, it really um, is. Cause I want him to I want him to succeed so badly. Yeah, and I don't want him to say at Leeds as well. We're going, <laughs> again, I think we're going I there, think but. he's a he's a maybe I don't know if he's mature enough, but he's a great shout for the armband. Yeah, if definitely. We, because if we, I, I imagine, I mean, I might be saying this and we might not do this, and this may not happen, but I think we're going to replace Liam Cooper next season at centre-half. I think we're going to get another centre-half. We're and doing if, another centre-half. I think if we get a really good centre-half for someone who's to, to, uh, partner Pontus Janssen, then I think Liam Cooper will lose yeah. the captain. If Pontus Janssen stays, of course. Which he might not. Yeah, we'll, we'll get on to that. Um... Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, Derby through to the final, take on Aston Villa. I probably won't watch that final. <laughs> I mean, all the build up will just be the Chelsea Derby, won't it? Frank Lampard and Ashley Cole versus John Terry. I'm, I, I personally, I'm not going to watch the game. Yeah, but, I'm um, not going to watch it. In the eventuality that Aston Villa win the game, <laughs> I'm going to be sending quite a lot of abuse to Derby fans, <laughs> Frank Lampard personally, and I'm going to be going on the Derby page for yeah. m- maybe an hour or so. It'll be, it'll so, be a good read, yeah. But um, I, I, I would avoid. I, I, yeah. Mind you, I never announced my Twitter on this uh, on this podcast, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to be sending so much unnecessary abuse towards them. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just going to be garbage. The final, it really is just going to be garbage, and I can't handle watching Grealish, Dean Smith, and John Terry running around Wembley celebrating off Frank Lampard and Richard Keogh running around Wembley, you know, for, for bouncing all... around like kids in a in a, in a sweet shop. I mean, it's just going to be awful. I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. I just want I want the full time whistle to go. I want to see Richard Keogh and Frank Lampard crying. Yeah. And I want to see cry, uh, crying Frank Lampard leave and take the Brighton job the following day. Yeah. I mean, it's actually got and to I, that stage that we. Want and, the, to and, I, and then I want to watch the Derby fan base react when Frank Lampard leaves. Mason Mountain goes back to Chelsea because they they'll recall him. Harry Wilson goes back goes back to Liverpool and they lose their two best players who yeah. were lone players and they go back to having that thirty five year old shocking squad. Yeah. And finishing eighth. <laughs> I really want to see that happen. Yeah. I mean, it's got to that point now that we actually want Aston Villa to go up now. <laughs> uh, Grealish will be. A great asset to the Premier League, definitely. But yeah, I don't mean to shit on a Derby's parade, but yeah, you are, I do. You are going I, up. I am. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shit on Derby's <laughs> yeah. parade. You, you are going up. Enjoy your celebration as well, last. But but you are going when up. they fail. Aston Villa just are <laughs> when they you. fail, I, I'm going to shit on their parade. Yeah, <laughs> Aston Villa just are better than you. Um, and yeah, you, you're losing in the final. You, you're in the final because we imploded. And yeah, Aston Villa, they're, they're going up. <laughs> they're going up. Uh, sorry to say, Derby. Uh, but yeah, enough of that. I yeah. would like to say to all promoted teams as well. 
at Sheffield United, Norwich, and uh, and probably Villa because it will probably be Villa. You're you are, going down. You are all going to go down. <laughs> all three of you. No yeah. chance are you staying up. Yeah, especially Sheffield United. It's Ooh. it's it's going to take Brighton or Southampton to have the worst season of their entire existence to stop you three from going down. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, <laughs> I mean, especially because Norwich's team is going to get raided. Brendan yeah. is going to go. Uh, Pookie Pook, will probably go as well. Yeah, Sheffield United then. Not Sheffield good United. Squad. Uh, don't have a good enough squad and Oliver Norwood will probably get sold as well because yeah. whenever a side gets promoted with Oliver Norwood they sell him immediately <laughs> I don't know why that happens uh, Sharp he'll probably stay with them because he's more or less captain Sheffield United isn't he yeah um, <laughs> the rest of the squad are pretty average yeah they are um, and Aston Villa as well Aston you know. Villa have a decent team but obviously Tammy Abraham's on loan isn't he yeah and he'll go back to Chelsea he's, he's back Chel- to- Chelsea have a transfer ban so they'll probably keep all of them who else do they have up front is it Scott Hogan Codger good luck with Scott Hogan in the Premier League uh, yeah, good luck Codger. with Codger in the Premier League because he's injury prone <laughs> and bad Adoma Adoma who is 49 years old <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jack Grealish, who will probably sign for Tottenham. Yeah. Uh, John- <laughs> Tyrone Mings, who's on loan, go back yeah. to Bournemouth. So Twan Zerbi. Ray, yeah, Twan, Twan Zerbi, he's on loan from uh, from Scum, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Sam Johnston, he'll probably still stay there, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Taylor, who is a fraud of a footballer. Alan Hutton, under the fraud of a footballer. Yeah. Alan Hutton, <laughs> about, about 59 I, years old there. I don't understand it. I don't... Yeah. I, but yeah, you all you're all going to get bad. And <laughs> look at look at Notch's midfield; like it's so average. Yeah, and I, I, I know obviously. Yeah, you've won the league. Fair enough. Yeah, you're back. You, you, they're championship quality. They are excellent championship players. Yeah, uh, uh, but, but, but we're but we're gonna we're gonna absolutely piss all over the championship next season, without a doubt. <laughs> No, we're not going to piss over the championship next it, dep- it depends who we sign. It depends who we sign. We will have... Um, uh, can, we, can we move on to transfers? Yeah, yeah I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a big, big summer ahead for, for, for Leeds United, definitely. I mean, first things first, we need to tie down Bielsa to a contract. Bielsa's contract, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, yeah. as I mentioned a few weeks ago, though, on the podcast, <coughs> we're both confident that Bielsa is staying. Yeah, stay. You know, with Bielsa's brother coming out a few weeks ago saying that Bielsa... You know, it's, it's saying the con- what the contract is. So basically, if we go up, uh, I mean, we're not going up, but because um, we stayed down, we have a one-year option to extend Bielsa's contract, and Marcel Bielsa oh. never uh, goes against his contract, and it's against his uh, family uh, beliefs. So um, uh, yeah, with that, against also, his family beliefs, yeah. well, <laughs> it's such it's such a strange thing. Yeah. He's such a one-off manager, isn't he? Yeah, like, he's great. Whatever, what other manager in the English football league would say? Oh yeah, I'm not going to leave this club because it's against my family beliefs. <laughs> not a single one. Yeah. I guarantee you, if anyone came in for Chris Wilder, he would leave immediately. Yeah. I mean, Bielsa's just just a unique character. I mean, there was that Phil Hay tweet the other week after a press conference. He was chucking it down with rain, and Marcel Bielsa's heading off on his walk back to his home in Weatherby, uh, just with a tracksuit. Phil Hay stops, pulls down the car window, and says, "Do you want to lift?" Bielsa said, "No, I enjoy this. I just carried on walking." He's a unique guy. I mean, it rains a lot in Argentina, so that's yeah. understandable. But uh, yeah, everyone yeah. thinks Argentina's really warm, but it's actually freezing in places, yeah. <laughs> and it rains. It rains all the time on the coast. So <laughs> maybe, maybe he just likes that. Yeah, I, I don't know. He, he must just like the walk. I mean, he's just a lovely guy. Bielsa. He just seemed like a lovely bloke. I mean, he's he's a pensioner. <laughs> he's a pensioner. What six four years old? <laughs> I, I might go to Weatherby Costa over the summer in the hope I'll see him. Yeah, let's just sit there for, just for sit hours the, and hours. Sit the whole day in Weatherby Costa, yeah. just reading the book, so 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 waiting for Marcelo to turn up. Let's so have a big coffee session in, in Costa just, Coffee. Yeah, imagine the coin you'd have to spend in Costa, because uh, it's like three quid a coffee in there. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be getting out of your bank account and be getting rinsed in Costa <laughs> Coffee all day. Uh, but yeah, we're worried. So yeah, Bielsa definitely staying, uh, we believe. Uh, but also after the game on Wednesday night, um, he said in press conference, it, it was certainly pleased fans. Uh, um, he said, uh, if the club offers me the possibility to carry on, I will listen to the proposal. Just accept a proposal, Marcelo. <laughs> Please just accept a proposal. Um, uh, I think he will. I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, also reports today. I mean, we're recording this podcast on a Friday, Friday the 17th. Um, and, uh, yeah, reports coming out today that Bielsa uh, is minded to stay next season and give it Phil? another go. Yeah, yeah Phil Hurd. Phil uh, said that, was it, did he say, like, sauces in Argentina yeah, or something? Yeah, sauce like in Argentina. Um, yeah, I mean, report. He, he, yeah. He, wants to be, he wants to give it another go. Yeah. And, and although I imagine there will be serious discussions behind the scenes that we're never going to know the, the yeah. exact details of it, where yeah. he'll be saying, 
uh, I want these players. If you can sign me these particular players, and I want all of them, then I'm here. I'm here. I'm, yeah. I'll do it for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, a lot of reports saying that that he's, you know, he wants to stay and, and carry on. And I think I think um, we, I think we owe him that. Yeah, I think this is the season where he's tried to do it on his own, with like not the, not not the players he needs, not 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 enough resources, not enough anything. And he gave it the best possible go. And I said it. I said it today. You see that? Uh, did you see the report? That article in the Daily Star. Daily Star, mate. <laughs> no, no. But seriously, this, this, uh, this is a genuine article. I'm going to bring it up. Right. Oh. This is the Daily Star sport. The finger pointing has started, and the blame rests squarely on the on the shoulders of Marcelo Bielsa. And I commented on it. He saved our comatose club and got a mid-table misfit squad with 60 injuries to within an inch of the Premier League. He's yeah. an unbelievable man and an unbelievable manager. Yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree with you. He's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I saw another tweet as well um, uh, from a journalist saying Bielsa's achieved the same things as Heckingbottom, Thomas Christensen. Gary Monk, Steve Evans, Hockaday, all the well, no, because not going promoted. Gary Monk and Steve Hockaday and Steve Evans never made the pl- the yeah. playoffs for a start. I mean, B- Bielsa, right? Bielsa, yeah, he's made the playoffs, <laughs> which, 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 no, he's which nobody done. since uh, since Grayson's done. Well, Grayson didn't even achieve the playoffs. In his, in his uh, well, no, but, I mean, we're, we're talking about since uh, League One. No, no, no. We're, but now did Bielsa. Bielsa didn't uh, get, uh, promote to the playoffs. We're on about achieving getting to the playoffs. Yes, which which Bielsa and Grayson did, and Kevin Blackwell did back in two thousand and six. Yeah. Grayson didn't make the championship playoffs, though. No, he made the League One playoffs. Yeah, but, playoffs um, but yeah, Bielsa he made the playoffs. He took a team from thirteenth to third, and within within an inch of. of of the Premier League with uh, six yard injuries, like like you said, that, that that's um, not an exaggeration, by the way. The exact number is, I think it's sixty two injuries yeah. we've had this season, which is yeah individual. I imagine injuries. more than four or five more clubs combined. Yeah, <laughs> it's been ridiculous. It, we haven't had a fully fit squad all season, and it, it, he's done nothing. It's nothing short of a miracle what what Bielsa has done here this season. Uh, and yeah, he's been brilliant. Uh, but yeah, uh, good uh, news articles, good reports saying that that he is wanting to stay uh, and give it another crack. Uh, but he probably does want a, a lot, and you know, we, we just need to give him it, don't we? We just need to do that. Just keep Bielsa and just give him everything and anything he needs to get us up. And get and have a good crack at it. Hopefully, um, he knows now what is required to go up next season um, in our centenary year as well. Ho- hopefully, we do do it. But yeah, we we just need to keep him and just give him anything and everything he wants. And I think I think we will. Uh, I saw reports today that Victor Rotter is already looking at signings for the uh, for Bielsa in the summer. He's, yeah. he's already more or less sorted out what signings he thinks that. Um, Bielsa will, will want and need and I really hope that includes a centre back because yeah. Jesus we've been short <laughs> centre backs in recent years Yeah, we've never had more than three at the club in the last like five years it's <laughs> yeah. been mental yeah. uh, we'll, we'll go on to, uh, to signings then uh, in, in the uh, summer transfer window so it is officially open now so, so I expect signings to be flooding through the doors in the next few days is it, is it, um, is it open already? yep it's open already um, I thought it started like 1st of June yeah, no, the transfer window is open for, for the uh, summer now. And, you know, I, I I would expect that a few players will get sold to fund a few new signings, like last season with Ronaldo Vieira. We sold him to fund signing of Patrick Bamford. We don't have... <laughs> the thing is, we don't have many players that will fetch a big price. Yeah. There's the a couple of the youth players that will probably... Fit, Clark and uh, will probably... Or Shackleton will probably fetch a decent price. But Phillip, we want to keep them. We want to keep them. Phillips will probably fetch a decent price, but we want to keep him. Yeah. Uh, Southampton are looking at him. That'll be the yeah. worst. Do, do you reckon Calvin Phillips will leave? I don't. I'd, I'd, I'd like to. Th- I'd like to say no. I, I, I'd like to think that he's a Leeds lad, and I, I, I like to think that he would say, "Just give it one more year. Just give it one more year." Why would you want to go sit? Why would you want to follow the example of Sam Byram? <laughs> yeah. When you go sit on West Ham's bench and then sent out sent out on loan to Nottingham Forest, yeah. When you could play for your boyhood club, and get for, promoted for, for a superb manager, be a captain, get promoted, uh, be playing, be playing literally, play playing every week. You would you be guaranteed first team football every week, uh, unless, unless you get injured. And you're literally a year away from the Premier League if all things work out. Yeah, and 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 you can see you'll know the signings that are coming through the door as as, as Phillips because the players obviously know before we do. Yeah. Because they'll see him on the training ground. They'll see him getting shown around. They'll know who the, the, the caliber player that we're going to be signing. I don't think he'll leave. Ponish Jansen, 
might leave. Yeah, I mean, we saw that picture after the uh, loss on a Wednesday night. Uh, he was sat uh, right next to, uh, leaning back on the uh, advertising boards uh, right uh, near the east stand. Uh, he was just sat there by himself, just looking and think. I, I would love to know what Pontus Janssen was thinking um, uh, while he was just uh, sat down there. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he, I reckon he'll leave. I really, really do. You know, he's been here three years. He's failed to win promotion twice, bottled the playoffs, of course, two years ago, and then uh, this year uh, bottled getting to the uh, playoff uh, final. Well, I don't think you can say he bottled it because he didn't play. Yeah, but... Um, I, I think that was a mistake, actually. No, well, I think having him on the bench was the right call. Bavardi had a good game in the first leg. What was a mistake was when Bavardi got a yellow card in the second half, then we should have taken Bavardi off. Um, that's what we should have done. Uh, but yeah, I would love to know what Pontus Chance were thinking, but by the, looking at that, I'm just looking at it thinking that's a man who's leaving that's a man who's leaving um w- would you be happy i mean obviously not happy but if he left would you be too bothered i'd want us to reinvest the money in um two new center backs yeah obviously of. yeah, yeah. If, uh, if we get 10 million for him 10 million for him just buy two five million pound center backs yeah immediately of, of decent quality i like um webster from bristol city he's a great he's a great center half yeah and um Preston, I've got, I've got a couple of decent ones, but then again, I'm, I'd be quite happy for us to. I'd I, I'd be more than happy for us to promote like the likes like Pascal Struik up as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, he'll need a, a bit of adjustment, and I know the fact that he he's probably more of a squad player at the moment, but he's such a good player because me and you've seen him uh, on the yeah he's a great on, player on the, on the lead streams when we watched on the 23s game. We saw him live in the final. I I saw him in the cup final against Newcastle. Uh, which we, we which they did lose, but he plays he plays so well. He's such a comfortable, strong uh, centre half, and um, he's so good in the air as well. I mean, we we were watching him the game in that um, final against Birmingham, wasn't he? And he yeah. won literally everything yeah. in the air. Didn't he was he was bossing it, yeah, um, yeah. And, I, I would and, love to see that. And we lack kind of a bit of muscle and height in the team, don't we? If you think about it, yeah. Uh, but Pontus Janssen, you know, I, yeah, like I said, if we get ten million for him. I'd be quite happy, and as long as that does get reinvested in the team, then um, yeah, I, I, I'd be. Uh, I, I won't mind that, uh, to be honest. Uh, but Pontus Janssen, that'd be interesting to see if he stays or, or leaves. Um, who else do you think will leave? Jack Harrison, of course, his loan is up. Will, will he come back? Do you think? No. Do you want him back? No. <laughs> <laughs> just no. I mean, I <laughs> he's, think, not, he's not good enough. I think for a squad player, it would be decent. Just have his backup as a bench option, but he won't want to be on loan as a bench option. He'll want to be playing, and yeah. he's not good enough. Yeah, fundamentally, he's not good. I'm, I've got nothing against the lad. It's not. It's not a personal thing. <laughs> and I, I, I want the best of my club, but the fact is, he isn't the best. Yeah, we could we could get a better player on loan than him. Yeah. So why would we get him? I mean, you look at the likes of Joe Lolly at uh, Nottingham Forest. They've uh, finished uh, below. Uh, we we won't get him though. Like... They'll want ten, twelve million for him. We won't get him. Oh, well, well Andre Ravzani just <laughs> get you out, get your hand in your pocket and fork out a load of money. Uh, but yeah, obviously uh, we've got a load of players coming back from loan, uh, a lot of joss. But I imagine that you know we'd sell all them or we attempt to sell all them. J- Jamal Blackman's <laughs> he's not coming back. Lewis Baker no. No, but all the players who we have on loan, uh, who we have out on loan. Oh, um, who do, who do we, we have, have out on loan? We have Sako, Sabiki, Ida Gucci. <laughs> I, Ekuban's going to get sold to that Turkish club yeah. it, uh, for a million yeah. quid. I mean, I'd imagine all these players, they're, they're dross players, they're, they're not going to get the team at Leeds United at all. So I'd imagine we'll sell all them. And that would build up quite a bit of money for, for the transfer well, pot as well. We'll attempt to sell them. There's no guarantee we will be able to sell them. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't judge uh, Idaguchi that harshly, to be fair, because I've never actually seen him yeah, play. Yeah, I've never seen him play, but Sabiki and Sako. Ah, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, I think Sako is, is, is liking life out in Turkey, and I think they quite like him as a player as well. So they might yeah. they might just take him off as if we said to them, "Oh, you can have him for a million, they'll probably take him." Sabiki probably similar. He likes it out. In, uh, is he in Sweden? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, in the Swedish league or the Danish league? I think he's at Mold. Mold, that's Swedish league, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's well. He's uh, is he? Is, is he? Is Swedish, isn't he? Yeah, he's Swedish himself. So yeah, he want to stay there. He oh, he, he plays for uh, AF Elfsberg in the Swedish league. Elfsberg, right? Well, yes, he'll want to stay there. And I, I've seen him score a few goals for them, so he'll probably want to stay there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll have to from the our scattergun approach from two summers ago. 
<laughs> where we still got all these players. <laughs> we'll probably have to get rid of all them. Um, I don't imagine they'll all be on big wages anyway. They'll be on small wages. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll attempt to get rid of them, and that, that'll build up quite a lot. I think the, Alter's um, learnt, though. I think he's learnt you can't just buy, like, six 500-grand yeah. <laughs> players you've got to buy, it, buy one kind of six million pound player I mean it worked for Norwich this season well look uh, have you written down I don't know if I haven't checked this ahead um, that's striker from Barca B that 20 year old striker whatever his name is uh, no I have not um, that we're, we're looking at I'm not sure if he's a youth team signing or a first team I think signing. it would be a, uh, a, I think a, he's, a youth I, team I think, signing I think he's a youth team guy but it's from, he's from Barca B yeah. which is where um, Becchio was from yeah uh, Rafa Mujica Machuca, Machuca. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how you pronounce his name. Anyway, we'll probably be, I think we're signing him. We'll probably get him for yeah. like 300 grand or something cheap like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely need a striker. I mean, the, the players who will leave, I mean, for me, Casilla needs to leave. He needs to get that next plane back to Madrid, <laughs> back to Spain, wherever. Yeah. Uh, Madrizani should definitely wipe his ass with Kiko Casilla's contract, to be honest. But he's got <laughs> free, free player as well. So. But he's got like another, he's got, well, he only signed in January, didn't he? So he's got like another two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> We've got him for such a long time. Well, no, he signed a four-year contract, didn't he? <laughs> oh my god! Four-year contract. He signed. Why, what is it with us and giving average players four-year contracts <laughs> and giving great players like two-year contracts? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kemal Roof's almost out of contract as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Kemal Roof. Twelve months left on his deal. I think. Kemal Roof. Do you think he'll leave? I think he'll want assurances like Bielsa. Yeah. I think he'll want. An... I think he'll say he'll say to Bielsa, or no, not Bielsa. He'll probably say to. Alter probably. I want first team football. I want to be. The f- I want to be in the starting lineup because yeah. I'm better than Patrick Bamford. He'll, yeah. po- he'll he will say that those words exactly, but he'll say yeah. I'm, I'm the best number nine in this team. And and he actually is as statistically well. he is the best number yeah, nine in the he team. Is. Patrick I- Bamford needs to go, doesn't he? Patrick Bamford. We've, we've made a loss on Bamford. <laughs> we're not going to make seven million. For, we're not going to sell him for seven million like we bought. Him I for, don't think we'll sell him, but if we do, we'll probably get four, four and a half, something like that. I don't even think we'll get that. It'll be three million or so. You know, he, he's a poor player, and Bam- Patrick Bamford. He still does have ten goals and two assists. So you you think some clubs might look at that and think we'll have him for that? But, yeah. But nobody else is. He's not going to get signed by a Premier League club, and I can't think of a Championship club that will want him. Yeah, neither can I. Unless um, unless the likes, because the, the only team you can think of are the teams are coming down. So like Fulham have Mitrovic, don't they? And they've got uh, Ryan Babel. Yeah. Um, so they won't need a striker. You got looking at uh, Cardiff. There's no way that. Um, uh, Patrick Bamford's going to play for a Neil Warnock yeah. team it's just not going to happen yeah. I uh, mean in, unless Bamford makes an improvement like Chris Wood did uh, in, in the uh, Guy Monk season then I don't want Patrick Bamford anywhere near his first team yeah we, we did say that same about, about, um, about Chris Wood and then he went on to score t- 30 <laughs> t- goals 30 t- no, goals in the season 30 goals in all competitions 28 in the league yeah. um, and you, there's an argument to say that he's had two big knee injuries yeah uh, and you never back to your best immediately he could he might need a summer to just get right back up to speed and he might come back in August and be almost a different player um, but we'll see we'll see yeah uh, but Casilla definitely we want him gone but yeah f- for me we need a new goalkeeper definitely I, I don't want to be a pick up foul starting um, but I also don't want Kiko Casilla at the club anymore uh, so. Kieran, Kieran Westwood I've heard rumours about this he's not linked with Leeds but he's been in contract negotiations with negotiations I can say that word with Sheffield Wednesday and they they're offering him a one year contract, and he wants longer than that. Yeah. Uh, and if if they don't agree, he's he's out of contract. We could have him on a free. Yeah. Uh, but we definitely need a new goalkeeper. Kieran Westwood would be good. We, we would face some serious competition yeah. just for Kieran Westwood's signature, yeah, though, and he has a bit of a history against Leeds. Yeah. For that Carlisle team that he was in when he was phenomenal, yeah. we've, we've played for against him when he's playing play for Wednesday. I'll, Plenty of times the last five years or so, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you'd make it. You, you kind of think, well, well, would he come to Leeds? Because um, I know he won't care about the rivalry because he's not from Sheffield. He's not from Leeds, but yeah. he'll care what other people, other clubs think of him. And if he goes from, because like it or not, I mean, it's shameful to say it, but Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday are probably one of our biggest derbies uh, and and our biggest rivals uh, in in the league. And he won't want to. He might not want to move directly to a Yorkshire rival. He might want to. Say if if Fulham come down and say oh, we need a new keeper because our keeper's not great and Fulham don't have a great keeper. Yeah, they might go. Oh, we'll we'll have you, and nobody nobody's going to have a go in for signing for Fulham, is Ali? No, because <laughs> Fulham are, are the most bland club in the league. Nobody, <laughs> no one has a problem with Fulham. No, <laughs> <laughs> no one has a rival with Fulham apart, apart from, from Chelsea. 
Uh, is it Chelsea and Brentford they've got rivalries with, and that's it? Yeah, because they're really close to Because they're, yeah. they're all West London clubs, but yeah. that's that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we definitely need a go- new goalkeeper, striker as well. Definitely, we, we need it. We need a twenty goal, twenty plus goal season striker. And you look at, I think if Kim Roof can stay fit for a full season, he would get twenty goals. Yeah, so do I. But I think j- just to be safe, get get another striker in. You look at the likes of Brentford. They've finished mid-table, bottom half, bottom half of, of the championship table. They've got more pie and Watkins, two good strikers there. I hate Neil more pie. Yeah, <laughs> we, hit, we, 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 have, we don't like him from this season, but two good strikers. You've he, got to admit it. He, he has shit houses every single yeah. season we've played against him. But, but you've got to admit it. Two good players, two good strikers there. Birmingham City finished mid-table. Che Adams. Che Adams. They, they finished mid-table because of their points deduction, though. They would yeah. have, they'd have probably finished about 10th. If but but Che Adams, great player. And I'm sure if we come calling <coughs> with the money, we say, do you want to be at a mid-table championship club or do you want to be in the Premier League next season if, if you come to us? They'll come to us. But again, they'll, you look at players like that. They'll want 10 million for Che Adams at least. Yeah. Or we, we won't pay that. Yeah, we, we just need, we, we, we the really pro, the do pro, need to. We need, we need to buy a bargain striker that will, will score us 20 goals, yeah. <laughs> which is incredibly hard to do. Yeah. Definitely tough, but um, yeah, we we need new striker, need new goalkeeper. Definitely, um, also need new winger as well. Need need a new left winger probably for me. A, probably need a couple of new wingers because Hernandez is slowing down a bit. Yeah, uh, 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 a couple of new wingers. Zayez, would you keep him? He, he, he's back. Would, would you keep him? I, if he can just sort his attitude out, he'd be such yeah. a good player. If he gets his head down and, and but he won't, but he won't do it because he's no. fundamentally Samuel Zayez is a playboy. He's yeah. not a footballer. He likes playing football <laughs> in the same way that I like playing football. Yeah. I just like drinking more, and he likes drinking and going to night. He's infamous in Spain for going to nightclubs yeah. and uh, spending all his money in, but in on <laughs> on his on his girlfriend and his and his and, uh, you know she she has like a reality TV show out there, and he spends all his money on her and all, all his money on getting drunk all the time. Yeah. And he gets hammered in Leeds. I'm pretty sure he's been seen out in Leeds when he's partying away in Leeds. So yeah. <laughs> he 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 is not. Yeah. He doesn't have the discipline we need, and he won't have the discipline to suit a Bielsa team. But we could get a decent amount of money for him, though. It was like, it's similar to the way that you know, when um, when Howard Wilkinson came to Leeds in, in the in the late 80s, and um, and John Sheridan, uh, who was at the team at the time, was, a, was an extremely talented footballer, that, but he just used to get drunk all the time. He yeah. used to go out drinking four nights a week and then play for Leeds on a Saturday and miss two days of training a week. Yeah, which uh, was tolerated when Eddie Gray was manager because that's what they used to do back in the seventies anyway. <laughs> but when Howard Wilkinson came, he, uh, he he put in a transfer request immediately because he knew that he would never suit. And it, it, if you watch that, do you want to win documentary? They say uh, when uh, the first day that Howard uh, Wilkinson came to the club, John Sheridan put in his transfer request the same day. So you know, certain players don't suit di- the the discipline required, and. Although they're very, very different at Wilkinson and Bielsa, the discipline they they want from their players is the same. Yeah, but but we could get a decent decent amount of money from for, for Samuel's AEs. To be fair, we'd, we'd go towards it, but um, maybe a couple of mil. Yeah, but I think those are three definite signings that we need: a goalkeeper, a striker, and a winger. If I'm being greedy, I want a centre back, I want a left back, and a midfielder as well. Six signings there. I would be happy if. Barry Douglas could sort his form out. <laughs> yeah, if Barry Douglas is I, I, fit all season, you can see a, you can see flashes of him being such a good player at left back, and then yeah. he, he just he got injured, and then his form just went off a cliff. Yeah, if Bar- Barry Douglas can keep himself fit, he could be good next season for sure. If he sticks to a holding midfielder role and actually plays like holding midfielder, he could be a decent. He's, backup. An, he's another one that I'd want as a squad player. Yeah, he he could be a decent backup. Um, but yeah, if I'm being greedy, does it? Does it? Does have a six signings goalkeeper striker. Uh, winger, centre back, left back, and midfielder. Would you agree? <laughs> That's a bit. That is greedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if, if we've got only signed three, wing, wingers are the big problem in this yeah. team. Well, would we, you say wingers definitely? We we lack we lack the width and the quality of delivery into the box from set yeah. pieces, from general crosses, from ability to beat a man. We have struggled for a couple of years now for having good wingers. And we tried to solve it by signing Alfonso Pedraz when he had his <laughs> And that was a disaster yeah. of a decision. I mean, a, a, no, no winger partner, no two wingers could be worse than Jimmy Kebe and uh, Cameron Stewart when we got them. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Oh, what's his name? 
Jordan Bataka as well. Oh, yeah. Jordan, do you remember when Jordan Bataka was on Come Down With Me? If you've not seen that, go on YouTube and search <laughs> Jordan Bataka on Come Down With Me. Knock it's something been, over with like a load of players. He's, st- he's still under contract at Leeds at the time when he's filming it. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing you'll ever see. And uh, he gets interviewed and he's, like, he's describing his career and he's just there holding a football <laughs> wearing his lead shirt. Oh, God. We've had some tragic... Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's what you got. That's what you got to keep... I know it's hard to hear now and I know... People are just going to have a go at me for saying this, but I don't care. You've got to appreciate how good this has been. Yeah, it's been a great. We'll, we'll, we'll look back on it, and we'll look back on it fondly. Yeah, you, you can't you can't underestimate how much of a of a of an upgrade this Leeds United club team, just organisation, branding, marketing, ownership, how much of an improvement this is on anything we've had in years. Yeah, it has been a fantastic season. The club, Unbelievable. The, the club is back. We might not be back in the Premier League, but the club itself is back. It's got life again. You, you can, you can see, you can, you, you can look at the club and think, yeah, they might do it, you, which you haven't had in years. You've never been able, in the last five five years. You've never been able to look at a lead side and think they might do it. Have you? No. You can look at this lead side, despite its many flaws, and think a couple of players here, this lot could do we it. We have a chance. We have a chance. Uh, but yeah, it's been a fantastic season. No, no doubt, you know, I know that it's finished in heartbreak, but it definitely has been a fantastic season. But a big, big summer is ahead for Legion United. Just like to say, um, apologies for swearing games. earlier. I'm sure Ed will cop out anyway. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have a go at me after this is finished as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've we broke the PG barrier a lot in this podcast. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to because it, it, we, we're not going up and it's going to be championship football. But, <laughs> you know, it has been a positive season. Like we mentioned, positive season and a yeah, big, big summer is else. ahead for for uh, Leeds United but yeah mem- many memories from this season but a big big summer ahead it's, Im- it's important to uh, build on from this and give us the best chance next season instead of hitting the restart uh, button uh, but yeah that brings us to the uh, end of uh, episode 21 of the All Things Leeds podcast thank you very much to Charles as always for joining me cheers for having me on mate and uh, thank you to uh, everyone who has listened as well. We appreciate it if you enjoyed. Cheers, lads. Uh, and then why not subscribe or follow the podcast? Give us a five-star rating on uh, Apple Podcasts if you're listening on there. Uh, share the podcast around as well. Help us out. Uh, do follow us uh, on uh, on uh, social media, All Things Leads on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search up All Things Leads on Twitter and Instagram. Search up All Things Leads on Facebook. Keep up to date with everything. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you have not already. Now, me and Charles, we will be back next week for episode 22, the season finale of the podcast. Of I'll, the, have, I'll uh, have to say this is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> I thought yeah. this was the season finale. <laughs> <laughs> now we will be back next week for episode 22, the season finale. Next week we'll do a whole season for review. We'll give out our own player season awards and we'll do an end of season quiz as well if we've got time. Uh, but yeah, we definitely will be back next week. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much again for listening and uh, we'll see you later. <laughs> We'll be